So, you know, I have nothing in common with Gretchen Wieners from Wiener Wieners? Okay, great. That's going to be on Twitter virally in a minute. Uh, from Mean Girls. Mean Girls, great movie. If you haven't seen it, she's like the, the heiress to these toaster strudel empire uh, in the suburbs of Chicago. And she tries to make fetch happen. And at, of course, Regina George is like, it's not going to happen. I have tried for years. I sitting at the at the table that is in NFL offices, the, the good morning football table said, throw down round. I called it. Every time it said divisional round, I think I would just say throw down round because I think it's a much cooler name. And it hasn't stuck. It got no love. Got no pfft, Divisional round stays. It, can we change it? Can we get this going? Do you have an even better name option for me? Let me know uh, at either Hey K. Adams or Up and Adams Show. But divisional round... So fetch. We got to make it happen. Okay. Uh, some things that we are looking forward to this weekend in the throwdown round and that I think that we're underreacting to. Doesn't it sound good? I know. Around the league. Uh, first off in our underreactions, uh, mid-season return of Tredavious White and what it's meant to the Buffalo Bills who face the Bengals. Man, Trey... Super bummer. Love him as a person, a character, and then he's on the field doing his thing. He's one of the best corners in the National Football League. He tears his ACL last season, later on in the season. It was around week 12, and he missed the entirety of the Bills' playoff run. And I don't think it's a stretch to think he really could have made a significant difference in preventing, you know, what we saw from Patrick Mahomes in Buffalo's devastating loss to that team uh, in the throwdown round a year ago. So he made his return this season almost one year to the day on Thanksgiving Day against the Lions and coincidentally, mm -hmm, the same day the Bills defense suffered another brutal injury, losing Von Miller for the remainder of the season. This all matters because when Trey got back and he's back on the field, they're undefeated. They're 7-0. They've held opposing quarterbacks to the fifth lowest passer rating in the league. And while he didn't look like his all-pro self right out the gate, you can't really expect that from him. And he's really looking even better as of late, making vintage Trey White plays. Look at this interception of Mac Jones. Now, granted, I could intercept Mac Jones. But this was Week 18, a big game, lots of different energies with that Bill Buffalo team, and they're trying to secure a two-seed for the playoffs. It's an important game, and he looked awesome there, and I'd love to see it. And he really might be the, the Bill's key in containing the Bengals' passing attack this weekend. Uh, and he's going to see, well, fellow LSU guys, you know, he's going to see Jamar Chase and Buffalo's pass rush as he surprisingly really had a tougher time getting home since losing Von Miller. Um, saw this on Twitter yesterday. I wanted to bring it to everybody. Oh, man, Von Miller, like, that's kind of mean. Oh, geez. Uh, their pressure rate with a four-man rush has dropped from third with Von all the way down to 19th. I think this is per NFL research. I mean, this is since that knee injury. That's a bigger impact than I thought. So it means that White in this bill secondary, they've got to bring it. They're tasked with holding, you know, up longer in coverage. Uh, and against Joey B and Chase and Higgins and Boyd and all those guys, that's going to be a pretty tough task. So if Buffalo is going to get it done, I do think it's because Mr. 27, Trey White, one of the best characters in the league, to be honest, has a big day. So underreacting to him, his impact, him being healthy at the right time, that's something to keep your eye on this weekend in the said throwdown round. Okay. Um, I want to keep things focused on the secondary here. Because while the 49ers' number one ranked defense has been incredible as a unit for the vast majority of the season, I think we may be underreacting to some of the struggles their secondary has had of late. Over the past month, they've ranked, man, this is bad, this is bad. They've ranked bottom five in pretty much every category when it comes to pass defense. And this is against Taylor Heineke, Carson Wentz, Jarrett Stidham. I mean, Geno Smith, David Blau is on this list, guys, really. Their DBs have made plenty of plays all year, leading the league with over 20 interceptions. They have 21. Lately, They've been giving up their fair share, too, okay? We saw it on Wild Card Weekend. Super Wild Card Weekend, sorry. DK Metcalf. And he's a beast, of course, and he's incredible. But he just tore through this unit. 133 yards and two touchdowns, including what you just saw. That was that 50-yard strike from Geno, where I was like, oh, my gosh, the Seahawks have something here. They're not going to get swept by this team. Uh... And I'm not saying it's time to panic by any means. We're picking holes in, like, the team that I think has the easiest path to make it to the Super Bowl and win it. But if the Dak Prescott that we saw on Monday night shows up this weekend at Levi Stadium in Santa Clara, you know, that against that, 
And this guy is, you know, the one that put up five touchdowns, that Dak Prescott, against what is a solid Bucks defense. Uh, I don't know. There's a world where the Cowboys could pull off a stunning upset here, and that would be the reason. And it might be up to Bosa and the boys up front to make sure Dak obviously doesn't have time to take advantage of what might be the only weak spot in what is an exceptionally tight Niners squad. So that's another thing I think we need to be keeping our eyes on, the pass defense, the secondary uh, of late. Because Dak Prescott, granted, a different guy can show up. But if he's what he was Monday night, I'm worried. Um, I also think we are underreacting just in general. We're talking about the name Wild Card Weekend, and then it's become Super Wild Card Weekend. It has been so fun. Over the past two years, right, the NFL decides to add an extra playoff spot in each conference, and there was so much concern from my family members, from fans, from myself even. Like, what is this going to do to the playoffs? What is this going to do as far as parity, as far as good games, as far as product, as far as watering down the playoffs as a whole, um, or making the end of the regular season less dramatic? If you think about this, though, if the playoffs hadn't been expanded, the entire playoff field would have been set before we even got to week 18, okay? We would have been robbed of the Sunday night classic between the Lions and Packers. This alone is enough for me to love this new playoff system, okay? And really, both of those teams would have been buried. I love that the extra spot gave a couple of teams that caught fire late in the season, momentum, all that matters, a chance to get in. I love it. We've had the best football because of it. This weekend, there was concern that we'd have boring games. <laughs> That's so stupid thinking back at it. What is this going to look like? Two teams playing without the starting quarterback, no Tua, no Lamar. Uh, you know, heavy underdogs all around the Ravens and Dolphins. Those are the best games. They gave two of the most entertaining ones on the entire slate and set the stage, by the way, for what's going to be remembered as one of the greatest plays in all of playoff history. The fumble in the jungle. Is that where we're going with, or is it the immaculate rejection per uh, Mike Florio? Because we credit Mike Florio on the show when he says something. We give him that love. Um, so we're going to witness you know, something special that we never would have seen had we not had that. And let's not forget about Saturday night either. No snooze fest. The Jags pull up one of the most epic comebacks. They pulled themselves out of a 27-zip hole, stunning the Chargers. This is great, epic football, people. And if that wasn't enough, oh, Doug Peterson, gotta love ya. The Balky resurgence, uh, second story arc. We are obsessed with it. But we also made history, potentially. I'm not sure that anyone has ever made a reservation to Waffle House. Okay, and so history was made this wild card weekend. It was a planned thing. Trevor said last week, quote, I told the team once we win against the Chargers, we're going to Waffle House. And apparently his wife made a reservation for them. They walk in. This doesn't happen, guys. This doesn't happen without wild card weekend. Uh, and I don't understand how anyone could ever want less playoff football. So everyone can keep yelling at their clouds, you grandpas and grandmas out there with all of this. Uh, so we just wanted to take a moment to celebrate what truly was an enjoyable viewing experience. I was on a plane for some of it and I was uh, so upset. I was so upset and, and I'll be parking my keister on a lazy boy somewhere all week. I could have just said that. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. Oh, golly. Uh, do we have any tweets? Anybody can check Twitter. Any tweets about throwdown round? No, nobody, anybody in, anybody out? How can we make this happen? Happen, happened. I don't know what I'm saying. What is it? Please beat the show. We appreciate you. What do we got? Throwdown round does have a nice ring to it. Thank you. Divisional round seems a bit basic. Now, I'm not against basic. I'm okay with, with things that I really am. I have a whole basic theory. We'll get into that in the off season. I, I advocate, what was it that we changed what? Change, change it to throwdown round. Who do we have to talk to? Somebody get me roll up on the phone. Hans, get me to Goodell, patch me in. Troy Vincent, let's go. We need to change this and up it. Super divisional round isn't gonna work. Super throwdown round, now we have something. Uh, we have a superstar up next, a super, 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 super bowl champ. That's right, four rings, maybe another one down the line, but we have the, down the line, we have the one and only Rob Gronkowski.